Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are continuing with our theme, Fallen Human Nature. Fallen sinful. And let me add to that. Fallen sinful human nature. And our subject for today is doubt and unbelief. Let me say in starting here, we have got to understand and always remember that since the fall of mankind, that is Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, mankind's nature changed. It changed from holy to sinful. It changed from pure to carnal. It changed from righteous to unrighteous. It changed from innocent to corrupted. Mankind chose another God to serve, that is Satan. Thus he acquired Satan's selfish, evil nature. Consequently, uh, every one of us have fallen, sinful, human natures. And it battles against our new born again natures. We have dueling natures. And it is the greatest battle ever fought. And secondly, because of this fallen sinful human nature, we are predisposed to fear and to doubt. Many times we wonder why our prayers don't seem to be answered and very often it is because of our doubt and unbelief. Reality is too many have no real belief and faith in their salvation. I mean in their present salvation. They only hope that somehow they will manage to be saved. They live in constant doubt concerning their own salvation and no one will be saved based on doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief disconnects us from power, God's power, healing power, cleansing power, saving power. It disconnects us from that power. Doubt and unbelief blocks the flow of that power into us. God be our help. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in us. As it is in heaven, Lord, work your miraculous work of grace and love and mercy in us. Remove from us all fear and doubt and unbelief. Cleanse us, Lord, from those things which would stop, which would prevent, which would slow down your working in us. Help us, Lord, this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's get started. We're going to cover the subject, doubt and unbelief. And we're going to, by God's grace, see this morning how important this thing is of doubt and unbelief. Let's back up to the beginning. Well, let's back up to the entrance of sin. And let's see what the devil used as an entering wedge to bring sin into the hearts and minds of mankind. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6. What does the Bible read? In this? We're reading this straight from the Bible. What does the Bible say there? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Ah, now let's look at this. We're talking about doubt and unbelief. Satan 
starts off saying, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened. He implanted doubt in them. You see, they, they begin to doubt whether God had their best interest at heart. Why, he was withholding them from being like God. And so he, he planted in them doubt. L doubt what God says. You will not surely die. Doubt what God says. He was holding something good from you. Doubt his motives and intents. See, he's withholding something from you because he knows that if you eat of it, your eyes will be open. So he, he, you, you just may as well doubt whether he's legit and acting like he loves you and he has given you everything. Matter of fact, he hasn't. That's why he doesn't want you to eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He doesn't want you to be like him. And they did doubt. And what happened was they partook of what God said, don't eat of it. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. The devil started off by implanting doubt. Now let's look to see what the Bible says concerning this thing of, of doubt. The Bible says you're damned if you doubt. Really? Romans chapter 14 and verse 23. What does the Bible say? Now listen to this text carefully. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. He that doubteth is damned. Powerful stuff. It must be done in faith. No doubt. There's no place, there's no room for doubt when it comes to God. That's a killer. That's a disconnect. The Bible says he that doubteth is damned. If he eat, if he drink, doesn't matter what he do. As a matter of fact, the Bible makes that clear. It says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Did you know that? I know that the Bible says sin is transgression of the law. But it also says, whatsoever, doesn't matter what it is. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. You cannot do anything doubting. I don't know whether I should do this or not. That's doubt. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to try it, but I don't know. That's doubt. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. He that doubteth is damned. I don't care what he's doing. Lord, help us to know how important this is. Conversely, uh, God tells us something. Matter of fact, Jesus tells us something concerning this matter of doubt and faith. In Mark chapter 11 and verse 22 through 24. What does Jesus say here? And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. The Bible says, have faith in God. We're going to expand on that a little more in a minute or so. But it says, Jesus says, have faith in God. And whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Jesus is telling you the truth. See, you see, if you ask for something and you don't doubt in your heart, you're asking according to God's promise and will. Jesus says, believe that you receive them. And if you will ask in that fashion and not doubt in your heart, you know, too often we doubt in our hearts. Let's be real. Doubt. Doubt. When we ask God for something, we, we don't believe that he's going to give it to us. And sometimes we use this, this, this cliche, if it be the Lord's will, to hide our doubt. We don't believe it. And, and it's convenient to hide behind the, the, the statement, 
if it be the Lord's will. You know, it might happen, it might not, I don't know. Doubt! It's a part of the fallen sinful human nature. It's so easy to do. It's so natural to do. People around us do it. They use the language that, that cloaks it. And so sometimes it's difficult. It is very difficult. We, we think we believe, but we don't. We're in doubt. We're not certain. We're not sure. Jesus said, have faith in God. You can say to oh, a mountain, a mountain of circumstances, a mountain of problems, whatever the mountain be, be removed and it shall happen if you don't doubt in your heart. Whatever you say will come to pass when you're asking according to God's promises and will. If you don't doubt, you'll have whatsoever you say. That, that's what Jesus says. This thing of doubt and unbelief is a killer. It's a quick killer. Matter of fact, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 57 and 58 tells us something there about this thing of unbelief and doubt. What does it say? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Jesus couldn't even do the works that he came to do among this group of people. Why? The Bible is clear. Because of their unbelief. Could that be the reason why we don't have uh, a myriad of miracles in our lives? Could that be one of the major problems in the church today? We just plain don't believe. We have too much doubt and, and unbelief. You see, too often we work by sight and by money. No money, no need to even attempt it. You can't see where it can work out? Well, forget it. Too often that's what we do. And Jesus, who works miracles, could not do his mighty works in and among the people. Why? Because of their unbelief. It's a killer. It's a killer. Jesus makes some strong statements over in Matthew chapter 17, and we want to look at them. Matthew chapter 17, verses 19 to 21. Now, now I want you to bear this in heart. Un remember it. What does it say, Dolores? Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not? Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Jesus says, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. He's not exaggerating. Is that a reality in our lives? He is not exaggerating. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Jesus said that. Jesus said that. You know, the disciples were trying to cast out some devils. And they had done it before, uh, by the way. Read your Bible. But this particular time, the devils went nowhere. As it were, they were laughing at them. We're not going anywhere. And they came to Jesus, took him apart to the side, out of the presence of the multitude who they were embarrassed in front of. And they said, why? Why could we not cast out these devils? And let me tell you, folk, if I don't have the, the, the power to cast devils out of other folk, I don't have the power to cast the devil out of me. That's a fact. Why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus gave an answer that was clear and plain and simple. Because of your unbelief. Why couldn't we heal him? Why couldn't we cast out the devils? Why couldn't we accomplish this or that? Jesus says, because of your unbelief. And then he relates something very important. He says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, if you just have faith small as a mustard seed, I don't care how small it is, if it's genuine, it'll remove a mountain. 
Genuine faith works. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. If it exists at all, and it's as small as a mustard seed that you almost cannot even see, it'll work. If you have it the size of a mustard seed, you'll say unto a mountain, be removed, and it shall be removed. Nothing, Jesus said, will be impossible unto you. But on the end, he told us something. He said, how be it this kind of faith, this caliber of faith, this level of faith doesn't come to you except by prayer. Of course, that's much prayer and fasting. Sometimes we don't do what's necessary to acquire the faith needed. Who's praying and fasting these days? Who amongst us? If you want the faith of Jesus, the faith that moves mountain, the, the faith uh, to which nothing is impossible, nothing. If you want that kind of faith, Jesus says it doesn't come to you. It will not come to you. It cannot come to you except by prayer. Much prayer, I'll add, and fasting. Why don't we have it, Jesus says, because of your unbelief. Now, let me make another important point. We learned this in the life of Abraham. You see, faith is not my imagination. Mm -hmm. I, I don't imagine something and then say that I'm praying in faith and God's got to do it because I have faith. That's sort of the idea we have. So therefore, I sit down and I imagine I want a 10-bedroom house. I want a Rolls Royce. I, I want $10 million in the bank. I want a private yacht. Huh? I imagine all that, and I get on my knees, and I pray. It doesn't work like that. Prayer doesn't work according to my imagination. Let's, let's clear this up right now. Let's read Romans chapter 4 and verses 18 to 22. What does the Bible say concerning the father of the faithful who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about in hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. A lot said here. Abraham believed what God had promised. Being fully persuaded, the Bible says, that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. That means that our faith is based on the word and promises of God, not our imagination. Now, God promised something very impossible to Abraham, a child. And he waited and waited and waited and waited, and now he's old. Old man. His wife laughed. She said, shall he have pleasure in his old age? And she laughed. That's a joke. And the Bible says that Sarah was past childbearing oh, years. It ceased to be with her after the manner of women. She didn't have any more cycles. She couldn't have children. And the Bible says, Abraham, against hope, believed in hope. It wasn't possible for it to happen, but he believed it anyhow. Why? Because God had promised it. He didn't become weak in his faith. He didn't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. Ah, oh, that's a powerful example. Mm -hmm. If God promised it, then we can pray with confidence that we'll receive it. Our faith and our belief is based on God's word and what God has promised, not our imagination. Mm -hmm. I go over to the hospital. I see somebody who's living for the devil, and I say, I want him to be healed. Lord, heal him. Well, uh, am I praying based on the promises of God and the will of God? And then when we pray 
and act and react according to our own imagination and nothing happens, we become less predisposed to believe. And we're doing it all amiss. We asked, we pray based on God's word, God's will, God's promises. Abraham was strong in faith. I don't care what the odds are. God promised it, I'm going to believe it. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. And then God counted it unto him for righteousness. That's a powerful statement. And it's a subject for another day. He counted it unto him for righteousness. That's what we need to go to heaven. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. Perfect righteousness. Uh, let me go a little further here because we are in the family of God or not in the family of God based on whether we believe it. Because our unbelief can separate us even from the very family of God. I'm not talking about church membership. Mm -hmm. Your name being on the church roll in some building here on earth. That means very little or nothing. I'm talking about the records in heaven. I'm talking about the family of God as decided by God. There's something that can separate me. It can break me off from being a part of the very family and body of God. What is it? Let's look at it in Romans chapter 11, verses 20 through 23. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee, and they also. If they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. We stand or we are removed based on faith. We are removed based on our unbelief and doubt. We got to know that. You know, too often, I'm going to reiterate this. In our churches and in our lives, we work based on sight and money. If we don't have the money, we don't even bother to believe that it's possible. That's right. If we don't see it, it doesn't exist in our hearts and minds. No need to praying about it. I don't see it. I don't have the money. Forget it. But we think that we are believing in God when we're so far, so far. Almost nothing we pray for happens and we say, oh, it wasn't the will of God. That cloaks our unbelief. And often we're not praying the word of God, the will of God, the promises of God. And therefore, our faith is has no foundation to stand on. Our request has no foundation to stand on. And then we become disillusioned when it looks like we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, and nothing happens. It's because of your unbelief, Jesus said. Unbelief in what God says. Unbelief in what God has promised. God help us. That's why the Bible gives us warning in this area. Hebrews 3.12, God warns us. What does it say? Take heed, brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Take heed. Be careful. Be aware. Be watchful. Take heed. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. And let me tell you, that evil heart is deceptive. Yeah. You don't know it's there. Why, well, let you tell it. You, you believe in God. Everything is well with you, so you love the Lord, you believe in God, and, and in reality, you live in doubt. I've heard people get up and preach doubt, teaching the folk to doubt. Mm. Doubt their salvation. Mm. No, we're not cocky. We're not going to ever say, there's no way that I can be lost. That's not true. We're not going to get up and say, I'm in heaven now. No, but we better believe that it is well with our soul. We had better believe not only that God will save us, but we are saved now. We better believe that we are part of the kingdom now. We have the spirit of God in us now. He that hath the son hath life. We better believe that kind of stuff. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible declares. But some of us live in doubt. We just floating along, 
hoping that somehow I'll be saved. Prime candidate to be lost. Why could we not? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. You don't even believe it. You're not confident in it. You have departed from the living God. You don't even believe that he has saved you and will save you and is in the process of saving you. You don't even believe it. You're just hoping that somehow, even though you're doubting it, he'll save you anyhow. God, help us. God, help us not to do that. I want to look at something else here. Because we need help. And we need to be like a certain man in the Bible. Oh, he was trying with all that he had to believe. But he was coming up short, just like us. We cannot produce in us the faith of Jesus. It's a gift from God. Jesus said, this kind cometh not forth but by prayer and fasting. But I am the one who puts it in you. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And he says, this kind cometh not forth but by prayer and fasting. So now let's have the prayer of a certain one in the Bible. Let's read it, Mark chapter 9, verses 22 to 24. What does it say? And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to, to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Lord, I believe. I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm struggling to. I believe. But help thou mine unbelief. His, his belief was real shaky. You know how we know? We know from verse 22. He's explaining to Jesus the problem with his child. All times they cast him into the water and to the fire and is trying to destroy him. He's possessed of the devil. And then he says to Jesus, but if, but if thou canst do anything. That's doubt. But if. <laughs> really? Are you talking to the creator of the universe? And you're saying, but if, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Amen. And the man got the point and he cried out with tears. That's why it says, this kind cometh not forth but by prayer and fasting. He, if you're talking to Jesus, that's a prayer. He was praying to Jesus. Lord, I believe. I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm struggling to. I believe. That's why I'm here in your face. I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. The area where I'm still doubting, uncertain, and afraid to grasp the invisible. Help me. Help my, help my unbelief. And that's our prayer this morning. Yes. Help my unbelief. I believe, Lord. I believe. I believe you're the Christ. I believe you died for my sins. But somehow, I don't have the faith that delivers me from the demons and mm -hmm. gives me the capacity to be used by you yeah. to, believe, to deliver others from mm -hmm. demons. I haven't been able to heal the sin sickness in myself through the faith of Jesus, much less in others. Mm -hmm. And so now, Lord, I need your help. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we, we bow in your presence today, crying with tears. Lord, I believe, yes. but help thou mine unbelief, Lord. Give us the faith of Jesus. You're the author and finisher of our faith, and the faith that we have in Jesus must be the faith of of Jesus, create that kind of faith in us and remove all doubt, all unbelief, all fear. Remove it from us because those things block the power of God, the saving power of God, the infinite power of God. Help our unbelief, Lord. We believe, we love you, we serve you. We want to enter eternity. We want to do your will. 
We believe, but help our unbelief, please. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, saints. Good message. Powerful message.